Hey yeah, guys, it's another glorious day. Uh, not sure where I left off, but uh, got the wheel arch trim back on and painted over the repairs I did. I say um, I'd rather look at this than I would rust. I'll stop it getting any worse until I can get hold of another wing. I've also got the uh, side bits back on. Uh, what else? I oh, yeah, started uh, started fabricating the fuel filler, so I put a forty-five degree pipe in. The bit that I cut off the pipe there is the extension there and I just need to make a little bracket to go around onto that joiny bit there and then I need to run the breather up to there and it may get sort of cable tied together just to keep it neat but today's job is down in the garage I'm going to be uh, doing the paint for the bumper uh, sort of the bumper trim panel and the side step brackets and any other little bits that need painting I've got down there um, so as the weather's good that's what I'm going to do so I'll get set up and uh, we'll make a start right I spent most of the morning setting this up ready for paint which took forever so we've got the bumper hanging off my little winch thing sort of in the entrance to the garage with sheets behind to stop it covering anything I don't want it to cover. And then various items hanging or screwed along here. Everything's been had a final wire wheel and degrease. And uh Hopefully we'll get the first coat of uh, rust encapsulator on today, let that dry up and then get the second coat on. Um, because today, as you can see, is glorious. And tomorrow is also meant to be even better. So tomorrow I want to try and get the Raptor paint two coats put on to all of this. Um, because I think from tomorrow, like Wednesday onwards, tomorrow's Tuesday. So from Wednesday onwards, I think it's meant to be quite rainy. So. Final push to get all this painted and done. Um, again, I I could film painting from a distance, but I probably won't just to keep the camera and equipment sort of away from any paint because it does go everywhere. So just got the uh, PCL gun full to the brim with the rust encapsulator, uh, slightly thinned down a little bit and uh, we're ready to go. So I'll bring you back once I've uh, got the first coat on everything. There we go, that's the first coat on. All the various bits done. Basically dry already because it's so hot out here. So I'll give it sort of ten minutes or so, and then I'll do the second coat. The second coat will be a bit thicker. I'll just adjust the nozzle on the gun, and uh, then we'll let that sort of set for 24 hours, and come back tomorrow and do the uh, Raptor paint. guys it is the next day and glorious I think in the last video you saw me putting on the second coat 
turned this part round and gave it two coats and also sprayed with the uh, extension inside as best as I could and I went in through the ends as well the hole there the hole there this is bumpers upside down I sprayed in this end top and bottom as well uh, I don't have much luck with the lance, uh, you know, the extension lance. They're quite fiddly to set up and get right. They're a bit temperamental. You've got to have quite a thin paint solution and faff around with the air settings to get it to sort of spray right. You constantly have to shake the can. You may have seen that in the time lapse, but um, got enough in there. So today's job is the Raptor. I've only, when I bought the paint to do all the chassis and stuff, uh, I don't think I bought enough. I bought a four bottle kit, four litres, and I bought an extra bottle as well. And that's all I've got left. Um, I probably need another bottle to do all of this. So what I'm gonna do is, as the weather's due to change over the next few days and be rainy, I'm gonna get all this stuff done in two coats so that once it's sort of flash dried, it can be moved inside and hung up. And if I've got any left, I shall do what I can on the bumper. Uh, but I don't reckon I'll have enough to do everything in two coats, so. But the bumper is obviously, I can shut, the way I've got it hung, I can shut the garage door. So um, that's that would be better to do it that way around, I think. So I'm gonna get set up, get the hardener mixed into the, the bottle, get it put on the gun. Uh, we're using the Buzzworld FX11 gun, which has got a, a variable nozzle. I could keep the light. Okay, that's the first coat on. It's probably dried for about 40 minutes or so, maybe 50. So I'm going to put a second coat on now. There's a cracking day. Right, let's carry on. Second coat done on everything. A bit of an issue with the gun. It was um, because of the way that I was spraying these, I was spraying the top half first coat, letting it dry so I could hold the top half and then spray the bottom half first coat and then repeat the process for the second coat. Um, so that meant there was quite a long interval in between each coat. Obviously not for you guys, because you just saw it in time-lapse, but um, the paint in the gun was starting to get a bit thick because it's got like a shelf life of, I don't know, like four hours. But in this heat, which is just ridiculous, that's probably shortened that shelf life. So it was getting a bit too thick to spray. So uh, I faffed around with it for a bit and then added some thinners eventually and got it to start spraying decent again. You can see on this one, where it's just coming out a little bit too thick. So, but I got it dialed in for everything else. And uh, everything's had a nice, decent, you know, two slash two and a half coats. The final coat was quite thick, so they're well protected. And I did run out of paint, so the bump will get done another day. I have to order some more. Uh, I shall probably be smart and order two litres for the bumper. <laughs> One should do it, but you never know. It's just, you don't want to run out halfway for a job. So, 
that is it for now. I'm going to uh, be working on putting the floor, uh, the false, uh, the fake floor that I made. You know, the, when I cut the hole out, made the aluminium floor. That's going to be going in uh, finally. You know, with the sealant and bolted down once and for all. And uh, and then basically once these bits are dried here, I can get the side steps back on. And then obviously when the bumper paint arrives, I can get that painted and get that put on. And we're getting pretty close to being complete. So for now guys, I'll say goodbye and I'll see you on the next one. Right, it's time to do uh, fill up the diff with uh, oil. Uh, I've got an LSD and it takes a slightly different oil to the non-LSD uh, limited slip diff cars so that's the oil that I'm using and they do come with this handy spout so you can you know pour it in but get yourself one of these um, get them off eBay, Amazon I think they're called pump fill bottles or transfer bottles or something like that so the idea is you, you hook that in where you're filling and pump away and it transfers the fluid in. And I prefer those to these because that sort of, you can get that to hook down and stay in place and it sort of squirts it downwards rather than sort of straight in. So I think it takes 2.8 litres of oil so these are one litre bottles. I'm just going to do a litre at a time, I think. Uh, here comes the rain. Luckily, I'm under the uh, tailgate of the Hilux, so I'm dry. That is, chucking it down. Excuse me. <laughs> That's about it. Hope you can hear me alright because the rain is really noisy. It's absolutely chucking it down. The other thing you need is a 24mm socket just to undo the um, plug. Hmm. Well, can't have nice weather all the time. Alright, let's put you guys there. Maybe I'll put you this side. <laughs> I've already uh, slackened off the bolt, so... Like I say, you can just hook that over there, like so. And there we go. Make sure your drain is done up. Just going to move you in a bit because the rain's getting a bit silly. It's not the fastest uh, way to get the fluid in. I think just pouring it in with a bottle is quicker, but there's a chance you can make more mess doing it that way. So. Anyway, I shall bring you back once I finish pumping this in, because it takes forever. It's still raining. I'm still pumping. <laughs> this is the uh, third bottle so we've got two full litres in there and we're getting very close to the end of this bottle so you have about another 300 mil left if 
you have no way of measuring you just fill until it starts to dribble out of there I can see the level is getting quite high now so should take pretty close to the 2.8 litres because we drained out all the old oil and some residue came out the front prop shaft oil seal when we did that as well there might have been a tiny bit left sitting in the tubes but very little right so we're getting to the bottom of this bottle yeah the levels right there I can see it don't know if you can see that probably not <laughs> the level is right there so that's uh, 2.8 litres exactly turn the wheels does that make a mess or does that drop the level a little bit let's have a look yeah. I'll just pop a tiny bit more in let's put another like 200 mil in the bottle I reckon not so I reckon we we're right there so Just on the edge of coming out now and just see that maybe <laughs> so I'm gonna call that good Don't have to go crazy with these, but because they've got a crush washer, you just feel it go stiff, and then a tiny turn, it will just crush the washer. And you kind of get a feel for it if you've been doing it for years. But right, that is all done. Right, I'll start filming again when I've made some more progress. Hey guys, got a cool little project we're going to tackle today, which is this thing, which I think is sort of a fresh air vent on the Hilux surf sits sort of behind the rear bumper and it would have had a little rubber flap on it which I've took off because it was disintegrating and perished uh, I'm going to put a new one on now I've got some very thin 5 mil rubber sheet uh, but I've been playing around with soda blasting a very sort of basic blasting gun and this is uh, baking soda Is a really sort of fine blasting media and this had quite a lot of dirt sort of in crevices that was really hard to get to and uh, I've already done sort of around this edge so it's got all the dirt out of these really tight corners and it also leaves a really nice sort of textured finish ready for um, paint and I've got a very cool paint to go on this so I'm going to make a start on blasting the rest of it and then we can get to painting it. That's all soda blasted and lovely and clean with a nice texture. That's the old bit of rubber that's 
I had this split in it and it was falling apart and it's really brittle. And this is the new stuff, which is 0.5 mil thick. I think it's like nitrile rubber or something like that. So I just cut around it as a template and that fits in there nicely. And I'm going to just glue along this bottom edge. That way it still acts as like a flap. So that should work quite nicely, I think. I might glue it at the top edge. Something like that. <laughs> I've got some two-part epoxy. So I'll get that glued on and then we can paint it. This is the um, paint that we're going to be using. It's called Plastic in One by um, Buzzworld. And uh, it's 13 quid for a 400 ml or so. And you can get it in black or you can choose other colours if you give them the paint code. And you can choose different finishes. I went for the Satin Smooth HD Reinforced. You can get gloss and uh, textured, things like that, so but they reckon that that sticks to you know, absolutely everything so uh, it's got really good reviews you know, people basically just saying that uh, yeah, it'll stick to absolutely everything so that should do nicely for that sort of plastic and rubber bit that we're doing on the vent uh, let's get that painted. Will it follow me when the sky starts to change? Yeah, we won't be afraid. We'll never be Coat number one on that bit. Coat number two. Keep the dry track. Dry up for a bit. And I think I'll do it perfect over as well. I just turn it round. Give it a couple of coats this way. And that should do it and let that dry up and see what it looks like right the new paint has arrived so i can carry on and get the uh, raptor liner put on the rear bumper <laughs> i bought two liters just in case so really nice this paint really impressed with it so far obviously time will tell as to how it holds up but I mean, application and presentation is is great. So these little one liter kits, you just add this much hardener to one of those bottles. Shake it for good three or four minutes. Bring it back when it's ready. And another little job to do. I've got some of these left over from something I used to use them on years ago. So rather than buy new ones, I'll make use of them. There's a brace running across here, but there's nothing in the middle there, there's nothing there, so 
I'm going to put some sand deadening pads on those sections. Clean up the surface so that it'll stick. all covered by the um, like the original um, carpet and then there's a big rubber well there's this rubber mat that goes on first which probably helps some of the sound deadening as well then I think there's the carpet and then I've got like a boot liner as well so I shall put this in time lapse because it'll probably take a little while Go. Makes a different noise now. <laughs> That's another job done. And you thought I'd forgotten about these bits, didn't you? I know. <laughs> of course not. And the other side. And we're all done. It's had three coats. Uh, it ended up having three because one litre of Raptor did give me two coats, but I wasn't. 100% convinced that the second coat was enough you know like it was I, if, if I had more paint in the can I would have just kept going on that second coat so I had a few things that I wanted to touch up on the uh, chassis of the car anyway um, you would have seen me do the area where the axle stands were sitting um, I jacked up the car moved the axle stands to a already painted location which allowed me to paint where they were sitting and they had two coats of rust encapsulator and then the uh, Raptor on top and also did a few other little bits and then I came back and what I had left in the can I put another coat on the front side and the back side of this panel so that's probably had three coats this has had three coats and the chassis had basically two and a half coats so this has sat for about an hour now need it to just dry up just a little bit more and then I can tie it up <laughs> so I can shut my door and call it a day but we're certainly getting there I've got a list <laughs> Now this was the um, know, vent thing, <laughs> it's come out nice. That's the list, as you can see, pretty much everything's crossed off. Um, I've got to adjust the brakes still, connect that brake line and bleed the brakes, fit the bumper, refit the interior, Sort the electrics for towing, fit the rear exhaust section, give it a clean hoover and polish, fit the spare wheel. That's it, then we're done. But for now guys, that is it. I'll see you on the next one. Take control.